So I uh, started out going up Goose Lake Trail, uh, just north of Cook City, and it's a pretty rough Jeep trail. I went in on Sunday, and after I got to the top, uh, I knew there was weather coming in on the following Saturday, so I knew I needed to get my truck down before then. First thing I did when I got up to 9,500 feet was just to double check my rifle. Shot it once at 100, and it was still dead on. And then I shot it at, I think it's like 690 yards. And aimed a little bit to the left because of the wind, but it actually hit left to right, right where I was aiming. So everything was on there. I got all my stuff packed and hiked up over the saddle above Goose Lake. Got the truck way up here and just walked up the side to glass on this little peak because I'm fixing to head back up over those mountains over there. Let's fix a walk back down to the truck, get all my stuff. Got stuff to spend seven days in there. Pretty windy right now. Right now I'm in a little hole though. So I thought I would video. Haven't seen any life yet. That first hike in is always the hardest because you're not acclimated to the altitude yet and your pack's heavier because you have all your food and you're not as in shape as you will be. I made it to the saddle up here, about three miles from the truck, 1,500 feet up. That's a grasshopper glacier there. That's extinct. Grasshopper's frozen in it. And then it's running down here from the creek. So I split up my bottles. And you probably can see the smoke from the fires is going to make it difficult to glass from too far away. I'm going to sneak up here and look around. So I was up in mountain goat country. I've seen a lot of mountain goats, but I was glassing down into the drainage, into the timber and avalanche chutes, into the upper west rosebud drainage. The very first morning, it was still really dark. I seen two, what I think are mule deer, standing in an opening, and then they just trotted across into the trees. And I decided I'm gonna hunt this drainage like there are sheep there. I just have to glass enough to find them. I thought I should at least find those two deer again. So I glassed from the saddle side, and then I walked around to the other side and glassed back down into the same drainage also. I was wet down a cliff and I, for 24 hours. I glassed in here. A lot of sheep sign in here. So I just kept glassing over all of it for a long time, but uh, because of the topography, there's a lot of stuff on this side. I won't be able to see. So I'm trying to make my way around up on the other side and look in this way. I'm going to show you my... I like these bottles. I just bought them for the bottle. I drank one way up here. Two iodine tablets in there. And I got these Propel. We got electrical lights in them. Something sodium mixes with iodine or something in there. It's like a science experiment. It's clear. It doesn't taste like iodine anymore either. I moved every night. Uh, with glass in the morning and then I'd take my tent down and move to another location and set it back up and then glass in the evening. Found this quartz. It's crazy white. I think it's too heavy to carry back up there. I got up over here by the, walked across the bottom of that. Whew. Up and down a few times to get there. I had been doing the keto diet and for food, I only took spam, blocks of cheese, peanut butter, and then a few packs of uh, already cooked bacon. I come in, well, it's around the corner over there. Just saddle. That's Glacier Peak, highest point in Montana. Some crazy clear water. Looks like a trap. It's like a little flat spot over here. And then right now I'm just running around with my gun and my binoculars. I wanna take a peek over some of these ridges. I'm trying to see where my glass when the sun gets behind the mountains. You can see the, I guess it's the fires in Oregon, the smoke. Another mountain goat walking down there. Probably maybe some of the tracks and stuff I've seen is from the goats. These are goat tracks because I watched this goat walk right here. Right there, and that peak right in front of it, that's where I spotted what looked like mule deer the first morning before light. Glassing from the other direction over here. 
just gonna do a little gear bag unpack kind of deal just because they got everything spread out but there's a lot of mountain goats in this area so if you're between mule deer and mountain goats you should be in a good spot but i about glassed it out i can't find those deer either they might have migrated out <clears throat> so today i'm gonna just pack up a killing stuff and leave my tent set up here and then just go on all these little ridges in here maybe i'll jump something up and then come back this evening and maybe start heading back out if we get back through that saddle so I can get around the other side of the mountain. That's where I was originally going to go first. But you know that saddle, you can see all this area. So I wanted to look there to begin with. Got the Stone Glacier bag. And new this year, I got the M5 Stone Glacier pants. Anytime I leave, I always have a bino case, which has my sat phone on it and my rifle. Real handy all the time in case I get trapped or something attacks me or something. Uh, these are for the water. I showed those. This I have an X pad sleeping pad. And this is the bag to air it up. And what's cool is you can put stuff in there and then open the valve and roll it down and squeeze all the air out. So I put all my food in there. I've been sleeping with it every night. I'm probably fixing to hang it up because I'm going to leave it here with the tent set up so squirrels or something don't tear my tent and my sleeping bag and stuff up. Clothes, I got a cheap wool, Reno wool base layer, which I put zippers in, which is a game changer. And I have puffy pants and jacket too, that probably from the 90s, I got on eBay use for almost nothing. I put zippers in the puffy pants too. And then I have a fleece jacket that a worker got me for Christmas one year. And I shot my 460 with it as a brace one time and melted a hole in it. I got the 28 nozzler. I think I got 17 shells with me. Three in there. Two are a bino case. Got a reusable game bags. I should not have brought this pot. I put these big wool socks in there because they take up the same amount of space, but I shouldn't have brought the socks either. I got two tarps. One's underneath the tent. This is my rain jacket. And I got a rain cover for my bag. I a lot of this stuff. I brought too much stuff. I got a pair of Spartan trail running shoes that are good for the water. If I had to cross some water, I could strip down and just wear those with no socks and go across. This is my idea thought, but I probably wouldn't have brought them either. I got the QU tent and these pants this year with my credit card rewards. I like the tent pretty good. Thermarest sleeping pad that uh, I can't think of the name Summit Sea to Summit pillow, which I haven't used in a long time and I always had my bag. But last night I blew it up just to see why I didn't use it. It's a little bouncy. What I normally do is stick my outer clothes, my jacket, and my pants in this compression bag and then uh, use that as a pillow. You can tighten it or loosen it to make it less or more firm. I wore that stocking hat sleeping last night. Here's my puffy pants. I put a zipper in. I should have folded that over and sewed it first because I'm afraid they're going to get shredded over time. Mittens I shouldn't have brought. I had way too many chargers for my phone and sat phone. This is some uh, gear fixing tape. That mounts onto my tripod if I needed a bipod. I like these little towels. I would definitely always bring these. I sleep in these every time. And my feet stay warm. It's a Nemo bag I got used off Craigslist from a dude, so it's kind of weird. But the reason I like it, it has the hourglass glass shape so you can bend your knees. And that's a game changer. And it packs up real tiny. It's a down bag. But yeah, I have a... It's a Cabela's Instinct, but it's made by Meopta. It's a Nizo Star S2. Spot and scope. Yeah, here I got a couple rounds, earplugs, a little lighter, and all the cords for charging my stuff. And then new this year, I got the GoPro I brought with me. I had a little camera, but I left it, which is a good choice. And I got the phone scope, which I videoed those mountain goats the other day. So if I was to shoot a sheep, this would be amazing. This weather's been great so far. I could probably leave the puppies for this trip, but. A lot of stuff I should have brought and left in the truck because the weather's 
extremely nice and going to be nice. And then Saturday, it's supposed to 80% chance of rain, which might be snow up here. Where I have my truck, you cannot drive out if it snows. So time-wise, I'm going to have to get my truck down. And then I'm probably going to check out some other spots that are less precarious to get to in my vehicle. All right, hope I kill a sheep. I forgot about my drugs and my pistola. Got caffeine, Benadryl, antibiotics, multivitamin, Claritin, ibuprofen, Tylenol. So that's how I go to sleep and wake up. And if you're hunting in grizz country, you have to have the Keltec PF9 with the extended mag. So you get nine rounds in there. That's what people carry in grizz country. Now I have a 10 millimeter in the truck, but I, I carried it out here one time with that bag and it's it's probably heavier than my rifle. Uh, this goes on that bag and it's good just putting a little pocket to sleep with at night and then just to have some kind of backup but you don't even think about it being there that's what I carry every day all the time this is my game killing bag I have a this heavy case serrated knife which for going around knuckles and stuff tendons it's always going to cut This case is kind of heavy. I wish I had a lighter case. The knife's pretty light. The one I've had for a while is this. Uh, this is a cut, cut co. This is the case. It's called like ultralight or something. It weighs nothing. I have a whole bunch of paracord. I like using these to lay the meat on when you're taking care of it. Here's some wet ones. It's one of those little towels, zip ties. And then, uh, I thought about this a long time ago, and then I seen another guy had some rings. I was like, yeah, I need to do that. So I went to buy some rings, but the weight limit was like 80 pounds, and they're pretty big to get any kind of weight limit. So, so I just bought a foot of chain, and it's a lot smaller, easier to pack, and it's like a 500 pound weight limit or something on it, and then some really small carabiners might use for something but uh yeah you could put these together with a as a pulley system and run a bunch of weight up in the tree with that long rope something else is going to dress is these gators <laughs> i hate wearing gators just for the looks of it but i guess it don't matter what you look like out here but uh i wear shoes hunting so you got to have them keep all the grass and seeds out of your between your socks and your shoe but i like this setup I got shorts on. These are open most of the time. So after striking out for a few days in the same drainage, I pack up and start heading back over the saddle. It's like a million degrees out here. Most of the walking in these giant boulders. Anytime you hit a spot like this, never step on that because you're going to fall down. Walk on this stuff right here. This ain't a real good spot to show where the boulders because sometimes there's giant paths of just big giant boulders walking across looks cool though right here it's not like walking through this stuff thing glass and i'm doing a very good job pointing yeah right there that one that's where i was at this morning for a long time and then kind of halfway up here in the middle of the glass and then way up here on this spot i glassed them but uh get the wind in my face walking out of here may jump something up Taking a little break, finishing today's block of cheese. I got this water out of Knot Lake, K-N-O-T-T. -T. So apparently it's named after a person because regular knot doesn't have two T's. Got me thinking, in the third grade, I won the spelling bee. And then in fourth grade, the first round was like a practice round. Everybody gets worried, no matter if you get it right or not. And my word in the practice round was naughty. I spelled it N-A-U-G-H-T-Y. They said no, it's K-N-O-T-T-Y. That's why I asked for de definition. I got runner up that year. Something I got a lot of pictures of is waterfalls, but they're everywhere all around. A lot of times they're hidden behind rocks and there are multiple levels to get down. That main one at the front is probably a thousand feet down. Every time I peek over one of these nooks and crannies, I think this sheep, this is a perfect spot. Fixing to start the climb back out of here. 
I tried to pay attention after I got to the bottom where I come right at the bottom of that little snow bank and went up through there. I think I come this way. I went around all these, stayed up high to get around to the other side to stay out of this stuff. I just walked through. But I come down about three different times, got pretty far down, had to climb back up, couldn't find a way down. One of them was pretty close to there. I come back up over here. So, see if we can get back up. It's easier to come down, cliff out, and climb your way out than it is to climb up something, and it's really hard to come back down if you're climbing. Here's the main waterfall. I'm liking a lot of wind noise. The top's at like 10,300 feet, where it starts to flatten down. It's like 9,500, so it's like 800 feet. It's not straight down, though. It goes back and forth, kind of like Karen designed it for a koi pond. That's how she'd do it. If I was a sheep, that's where I'd live right here. I figured like it'd be a like a funnel because as far as I can go into the road, it'd all be stuck up here. Not so. I've made it most of the way up. So dumb. I always say I'm not gonna do stuff like this. I end up here. I'm gonna go across the top of this little chute. I think right up in the middle of the cracks in the best way, then I'm, I'm done. We're not hiking up a glacier or even sheep hunting. Yeah, it's been a few days. Went up to Goose Lake, over the saddle, to West Rosebud drainage. And glassed it over real good. I mainly wanted to hunt around this other side of the ridge that goes into the Stillwater River that flows into the Yellowstone. But I come up here and it's a really good glassing spot this morning, but I don't see anything. I originally wanted to go up on that plateau probably first, but uh, there's three different drainages that flow into the still water. I'm gonna drive around the other side and then go up to the middle. The second point over, there's a plateau. Then I can glass both ways. So that's what I'm gonna do today, try to get up over there. It's weird to think how small I am out here compared to all this, both spatially and temporally. It's like I'm like a little speck walking around these mountains. But another thing is if you look at them, I mean, you can, just tell it's crumbling down. It's like he built a giant Lego castle and some bully with a Nerf bat's beating it to the ground. But it happens on such a different time frame that I can just walk safely through all of it. This is why these zip-offs are almost necessary. Just pulled these down. I put a little uh, chair handle webbing, made a little button here so I can attach them at the top. But I used to never wear these thermal bottoms because it's a hassle to get them off. I just took off walking a few hundred yards and now I'm burning up, even with them opened up, so I can just take them off. There you go. That's some flat water. Makes you want to test your rifle again. But still on the wilderness area. I don't think you can just shoot there. It's kind of birds out there. It's called Goose Lake. Last night I was tent up in the saddle in the dark. Some big bird flew by. I was nervous. It might have been a pterodactyl. And then I remembered this is Goose Lake, so I thought it's probably a goose. I came in here four days ago. I think it's my, my only tracks. From four days ago coming here. So I made the drive around back down the Goose Lake trailhead and around to a different trailhead close to the Stillwater River. It didn't go through a town or anything. It's just taking Jeep trails back around. It took me a little while. One thing I uh, think is cool about sheep hunting is uh, any kind of other kind of hunting you do, if you shoot anything, you have to put BBD on Facebook or social media right away. It's, it's like necessary, which stands for big buck down, or if you're elk hunting, big bull down. Uh, same thing as you get a mountain gun, be big billy down. You can shoot a bear or a pig, big boar down. Uh, uh, shooting a sheep, it's BRD. Everybody knows what you got if you put that on there. From where I parked the truck on the other side, it was 8.4 miles where I would get to start climbing up to this plateau the next day. That evening I found this little knob and it's looking up the drainage I was looking down from earlier. So I just set up camp there and glass from that spot. 
the next morning is a 3,000 feet climb up there to the right to get up where I wanted to go. So I'll grab my glass and I'll get some water. I got to watch these moose that evening. I seen them about every day, a mom and two twins, and then a pretty good bull for a Shiris moose. This whole trip, I kept thinking about this song a lot called 100% Reason to Remember the Name. It starts off 20% luck, 10% skill, 15% concentrated power of will. With this unlimited sheep hunt, it feels like it's 85% luck, 15% concentrated power of will to keep hiking, keep staring through your glass, and maybe just a trace of skill thrown in there. I like this tent set up next to this log because I just tied a knot in the vestibule and put a stake through the middle of the knot. I think that'd make it more of a four season tent. I was a little worried about condensation. But if you did that both sides, you can open those little vents up. But uh, it was way warm in there because I had all my clothes on out here glassing. And then when I got in last night, I just had to sleep in my t shirt and shorts. I'm worried about getting attacked by one of these. I'm not that scared of you. I guess I'm going to try to back around here. Oh, there he goes. Oh, there's a whole family of them. I'm the same ones I saw last night. Water time. I don't think I show this too often. This one I'm already drinking. I'm fixing to finish it up. I'm going to take these two up to this next creek before I start to climb. I may just drink them all and don't take any water up to the high part. Put two iodine tablets in these. I think this is a rock that Moses smoked. I never smoked anything before. Never smoked it. There's a cow and a calf right there, moose. Probably the same ones. Could have shot them a hundred times. 7,500 feet. Little snake come down this rock. I was grabbing across that way. I think it'd be snakes up here. Hadn't thought about it though. Wants the peanut butter. Heck, it's not very big. I started at 7,100 feet down on the river this morning. I'm 8,600 now. Many hours later, almost there. There's a big, flat, grassy plateau up there. I hope there's a sheep waiting on me, but if not, I'll build a glass off both, both sides. And every time you get up to the peak here, there's another peak behind it. Old tracks right here though. And she threw this little some elky looking stuff. There definitely could be sheep up here, but I feel the glass fall down right now. I'm gonna try to drop over the saddle, get some water from this little lake. Leave my stuff at the top, see if I can climb down and back up. I'm gonna just check out all this stuff here first. Walking around. And then it's only like three o'clock. Some glass a bit later down in the drainage. Made it to the top, but I don't think it down right here. You get this water straight from the source. Melt the glacier. All the time at the house, my kids will say I'm thirsty. I'll say, here's a bottle of water. I'll say, I don't want water. And I'm like, you're not thirsty now. If you're thirsty, you climb down this 800 foot cliff, drink water out of a lake. I'm gonna get some out of here right now though. It's upper corkscrew lake. I only made it down here. My bag's still way up there on the cliff with all my stuff. I'm gonna drink three bottles here and then take three bottles up with me to save for tomorrow. I'm gonna get up on this knob and look around too. Look at that pretty little meadow. You think something would have to live in there? Mule deer, elk or something at least. This river's pretty loud, but I thought it was weird that I was seeing the top of this drainage earlier. Where's all this water coming from? It just keeps coming. Looks like it would just flow out and then be gone. That was on the way back out. I finally made it back to the truck after the season had closed. I was gonna show in my M5 pants did survive. Didn't get no sheep. I uh, drove my truck out of there, drove the 19 hours back to Oklahoma and had a lot of fun, good practice hunting in the back country, sleeping with the grizz. Be way less scared in Colorado now. Got elk tag there in a couple weeks and hopefully I can put some meat in the freezer then. If you're still watching this amazingly long video, I'm impressed. There you go.